Hello, hello, hello. This is the Vanilla JavaScript Podcast. I'm Chris Ferdinandi. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, I'm talking about how I set up and configure all of my websites. Let's dig in. So I maintain about a dozen different coding-related websites, including gomakethings.com, uh, the website for my Vanilla JS Pocket Guides and Vanilla JS Academy, the website for this podcast, and the Vanilla JS Toolkit. I've also got a few other hobby sites, including one for my D&D campaigns, because I play Dungeons and Dragons, and a site for a rules light RPG I made called Kitchen Table Adventure. And I will link to a bunch of this stuff down in the show notes uh, if you're interested. I've also had a few folks over the last month or three ask me what my tech stack looks like and how I manage all these sites. So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, for hosting, let's just start right there. All of my sites are hosted on a single $5 a month digital ocean droplet. They are weirdly secretive about whether or not their hosting is green, which of course means it's generally not. Some data centers of theirs use green power, but many do not. Um, and I'd personally love to either switch providers or more ideally see their hosting shift to more renewable energy in the future. I also use Server Pilot for um, more easily being able to add new apps or sites to the droplet. Um, Server Pilot is the thing that has allowed me to use a single droplet for like 10 or 15 sites. Uh, it sorts out all the routing and everything like that for me. Uh, Server Pilot also provides a GUI that you can use to set up different sites, link domains to the DigitalOcean droplet. Um, it adds a security layer, adds Nginx, Nginx, Jinx, J I can't pronounce that. N G I N X. Um, uh, Ingix, I don't, whatever. Um, on top of the Apache hosting, um, and installs a LAMP stack, and it automatically keeps everything up to date. It also lets me one click change my PHP versions. Uh, Server Pilot is absolutely amazing. I'm fortunate enough to be on a legacy free plan that they no longer offer, but they have some really affordable options even now, and I cannot recommend them enough. They are so great. Uh, CMSs. My sites are all powered by Hugo, a static site generator, which I will drop a link to down in the show notes. All of my pages are authored in Markdown, which gets merged with some HTML templates and rendered into flat HTML files. This dramatically reduces the load on my servers and is a big part of how I'm able to run a dozen or so sites on a single inexpensive server. Uh, if you want to play around with Hugo, um, I have a starter template up on GitHub that I'll link to. Um, there's also a new kit on the block, uh, not so new anymore. It's about a couple years old now, um, Eleventy, uh, which is built by my friend Zach Leatherman. It's a bit more flexible. Um, it can do a bunch of stuff that Hugo can't, but it didn't exist when I started, and I'm way too entrenched in Hugo now. Um, and I also personally just didn't want to bother messing around with Node on my servers. Um, I technically have no CMS. I create a new Markdown file for each article, save it, and push it to GitHub. I have a webhook that uh, triggers an automatic deploy process on my server, which um, I have an article on how that works that I'll link to in the show notes. And I also use cron tasks on my server to manage schedule posts. And I will drop a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, it's actually Zach Leatherman who built Eleventy that taught me how to do that. Um, and that's been a huge, um, uh, just a really huge thing for me in terms of allowing me to um, to kind of move forward with this process and write things in advance and have them automatically um, kind of go live when I need them to. Uh, in terms of a design system, I have a directory on my computer with my own design system, including all of the CSS and JavaScript snippets. And I use my own build tool boilerplate to manage that all. I will also drop a link to that in the show notes. Uh, I import the design system into each of my projects to keep the design consistent. And whenever I update it, I have a command line thing I run uh, that pushes this updated file to all of my projects and updates them on GitHub in one swoop. The newsletter that I use for both my sites and this podcast, if you get notifications by email, uh, is powered by um, MailChimp, although they were recently purchased by Intuit. Um, and so right now I'm also exploring some other options like ConvertKit, um, uh, who I've looked into before and they didn't quite fit the bill, um, but they have some new features now that might make them a better option than they were a year or two ago. Um, uh, MailChimp has made their offering a lot more confusing 
over the last few years, even before Intuit acquired them. Um, but they're relatively inexpensive, or at least they were before my list grew to over 10,000 people. Um, they're reliable and I've been using them forever. Um, so the thing with me and my approach to most of my business stuff is that I am lazy as fuck. And so my emails all start off as blog posts that I write in Markdown. This makes syntax highlighting my code really easy. Um, I don't use a JavaScript syntax highlighter. Hugo, um, when it processes my Markdown files, hard codes that into the rendered HTML. Um, and then I just have some CSS to style it. I use MailChimp's RSS to email feature, which ConvertKit also has a feature like that, um, to turn each of my daily blog posts into an email. And this happens automatically each day. Um, I also, because I sell so much stuff, um, have an API for marketing messages. Um, so I sell a whole bunch of educational material. And when I make new stuff, I like to let people know about it. But trying to manually update a dozen sites is a time-consuming, error-prone, and annoying process. Whenever I'd launch new products, it used to take me hours to set up marketing messages and then go change them, turn them on, turn them off. Just a huge hassle. So I created a marketing API. It's a JSON file uh, with calls to action, adjusted pricing info, testimonials, and even my current about me information. When Hugo runs a build, my static site generator, it uses its built-in API fetching feature to get that JSON file and use the content in it to generate HTML. I also use Hugo itself to generate that file from some YAML files, which allows me to set up start and end dates for sales messages in advance. So I can do things like on this date, go live with this message. On this other date, change the message so that it says, you know, the sale ends in one day, uh, today, um, whatever it happens to be, three hours, you know, so I can really targeted kind of messaging. Um, and then the system just kind of automates itself away. I've done the same thing for messages in my newsletter. Um, I have a special just for MailChimp RSS feed that includes marketing messages for subscribers and takes advantage of MailChimp's if else logic so that I can even customize that messaging based on what someone has already purchased. Uh, the one part of my process that is not a static site generator is my checkout cart. Uh, that is handled by a dedicated WordPress install um, and easy digital downloads, uh, which is a plugin for WordPress. And this is the only not Hugo part of my setup. This lets me not worry about how to integrate things like Stripe and PayPal. I can also use WordPress's custom REST API to get a list of purchases for a specific customer and give them access to the stuff they've purchased in my student portal, which is also powered by Hugo. Um, I've customized the UI for easy digital downloads quite a bit to make the process more streamlined and more in line with my branding. Um, but um, yeah, otherwise, uh, it's just WordPress. So just to recap, I use DigitalOcean for hosting with Server Pilot for server management. I use Hugo for generating all of the HTML. MailChimp for my email, although I'm looking into ConvertKit at time of recording this and um, easy digital downloads and WordPress for checkout. If you have any specific questions about this though, or you're just kind of curious about how I do something, um, please feel free to head over to gomakethings.com slash about and shoot me an email um, to let me know. Anyways, that's it for today. If you wanna finally master JavaScript, head over to vanillajsguides.com and check out my podcast, uh, I'm sorry, my pocket guides and video courses. And as a listener of the show, you can take 30% off with the code podcast at checkout. See you next time. Cheers.